This is Unit 3 Triangles, Preview Video 3.6, Part 2, the last preview video of this unit. Taking a look at this page, make sure you get a parent signature. So last class, we talked about four shortcuts to congruency. Four shortcuts to congruency. Side, 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 angle, side angle side angle and angle angle side angle side angle I call that one the hamburger and that's because I have a pair of angles a side and an angle 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 side I call it the tail because it's an angle an angle and then a side so we're gonna follow gift here given implied freebies talk it through. If you follow these steps very deliberately, you'll never get lost in these. But it's very important. You do not just mark these diagrams however you feel like it. You must follow GIFT. So let me give you an example here. We are given that AC bisects BCD only. So we trace AC, BCD, sweep, I'm going to write the word bisect, only. Be very careful. Doesn't tell you to bisect the other side as a given. Cross that out. We are also told that angle B and D are congruent. So hatch mark, hatch mark, we officially have a pair of angles given. Implied. Well, because of the bisector, of course, it's implied that this angle and this angle are congruent. So we have another pair of angles, 1A for each pair. Freebies. Freebies are things that are always congruent, but never marked for you. Always congruent, never marked. It's a reflexive side, reflexive angles, and vertical angles. Here we have a reflexive side, AC, hatch mark. And now we talk it through. You ask yourself, is this side here sandwiched between two distinct angles? which would make it angle side angle, or is it a tail of one set? And because these angles are up here, notice those blue angles do not touch the sides. This would be angle angle side. Angle angle side. You could also say side angle angle, which would be the same thing. But the side is not sandwiched between both angles. What would be would be these guys in orange. Okay, but we're not told those are congruent. Ready? Given AB and DE are parallel. So I'm going to stretch it out, stretch it out, parallel. Point C is the midpoint of BE only. Okay, implied. What's implied here? Because of the midpoint, I know these are congruent, so I have a pair of sides. What's also implied? 
because I have parallel lines, I have armpits of the Z going this way. I also have armpits of the Z. I could go the Z the other way. Either would work because they're parallel. That's what would be implied. A freebie, of course, is still the vertical angles. Now, you got to talk this through. Watch very, very carefully, okay, because there's a lot of moving parts here. We obviously have a side, okay? Now, we could call it like this. We could have angle, angle, and then a side. Angle, angle, then a side. That would be one option. But because this side and this side is also squeezed between two angles, It could also be the hamburger, which would be angle, side, angle. So this diagram would qualify as both under the given circumstances. We're going to walk through two explanations here. I do one and you're going to do one. Given. We are told here that AB and ED are parallel. So AB and ED are parallel. We are told that angle C and angle F are congruent. That gets us a pair of angles, 1A for each pair. And we are told that AB segment and ED, the segment, are also congruent. That gets us a pair of sides. We're trying to prove why are these triangles equal. So given, I've marked the given already on the diagram. What's implied here, because of the parallel lines, remember you should always be watching out, because of the parallel lines, we get armpits of the Z going on here. That's implied. So I have a pair of angles. There are no reflexive sides here. There are no vertical angles here. So freebies. And now we talk it through. Look at what we have going on here. We have a pair of angles. And then we have another pair of angles. And then a side. That side is not sandwiched between two angles. It is a tail. Angle, angle, and then a side. So we have here, we know we're going to be talking about angle, angle, side. So let's bring our markings back over here, and we're going to do what's called a narrative proof, which means a written proof. We had the parallel lines. We had AB congruent to ED. And we were also told that F and C were congruent. And we got the armpits of the Z going on here, angles 1 and 2. And we determined already that we're dealing with angle, angle, side. So when you're doing your narrative, you're simply writing a paragraph. And we're going to follow this exact order. We're going to follow the narrative of angle, angle, side. Remember, we're going to talk about our math, our meaning, and our punchline. This one I'm going to do with you. The next one you're going to do on your own. I'm going to talk about the given angles first.
So I start with the fact that angle F and C are congruent. Why are they congruent? This technically should be a congruent sign because it is given. Said line A, B, and E, D are parallel. Why do we know that's true? It's given. So angles 1 is congruent to angle 2 because when you have parallel lines, alternate interior angles are congruent. If instead here you put um, armpits of Z, I will totally take that. Last but not least, we're going to talk about those sides. Finally. AB is congruent to ED because it is given. That gets us a pair of sides. And then you need a summary statement that, that pulls the whole thing together, some sort of summary statement. Therefore, we have two congruent angles we have two congruent angles and then congruent sides so the triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. So that's a narrative proof. It's just like a little paragraph. This one we're going to do a two-column proof, very similar to a bare paragraph, except it's just arranged in I know that because statements left to right. So right here we take, we're going to walk through given. Given DAC is isosceles with vertex A. So isosceles, it's given. Implied by that, of course, is the fact that you have two equal sides. We're also told that AB is a median, which by definition, median means a midpoint. So that's given. Implied by that midpoint is these two are equal. Freebies. We also know we have a reflexive side here. So we're going to talk through why are these triangles congruent. Well, I have a pair of sides because isosceles, another pair of sides because of the median, and then I have a reflexive side. Now, just to make life interesting, also implied by the isosceles is the fact that angles 1 and 2 are congruent. So theoretically, I could go side, angle, side here, or side, side, side. Both would work under the given circumstances. So I'm going to work with the fact that side side, side. I could have done side angle side as well. So you start with your given. It is given that 
triangle. DAC is isosceles. Why is that true? It is given. Two. Because of that, I know that AD is congruent to AC. Why is that true? Isosceles triangle. And I'm going to mark that as my first S. I'm going to go for this S right here. Number three. AB is a median. Why is that true? That was part of our given. Implied by that, is the fact that DB is congruent to BC because a median has a midpoint. That's definition of a median. And there is our second side. Last but not least, we have this reflexive side down the middle. And this is the way you write it. It's going to look a little strange. You write AB is congruent to AB. And the reason is, number five, reflexive. There is our third side. So now I can finally conclude what we were trying to prove, which is that these triangles are equal. Triangle ABF, so A, hmm. nope, we got the wrong things here. It should be ABD. ABD is congruent to ABC. Triangle ABD is congruent to triangle a, C, A, B, C. And the reason is side, side, side.